everyone. Auspicious greeting and good morning to all. I wish you all have a good week. Let us start with a warm welcome to you to our weekly community of practice Sunday chat-in section for half an hour of Dharma reflection and community connections. So if you are a new member to our community, please accept our wholeheartedly warm welcome to you. We also welcome any questions, whether it is regarding to practices or the topic, and we love to help. So this is customary for people in Australia to begin any meeting by acknowledging the traditional owners of our land. I would like to start today by acknowledging the Tarawa people as the traditional owners of the land on which Nantian Institute resides. So I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands on which you all are. And I pay my respects to the elders in the past present and emerging. So the check-in sections have been developed by our communities of practice team and the entire community. The purpose of these sections is to develop a reflective practice in response to changes. So guided by humanistic Buddhism, we would like to cultivate our practices and to build memorable friendships. So this is a list of the topics for the month, and now we're in September. So today, topic for today is radical hope and everyday courage. And we are grateful to have Meg Hart to facilitate us for this section. So Meg Hart from Sydney is a psychologist, writer, and a guest lecturer in NTI. So let's welcome Meg Hart to share her insight with us. Meg, over to you. Thank you, Joyce. Morning, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, I thought we'd start with um, just a, a, a brief moment to sort of settle ourselves in this space that we're sharing today, this space of reflection. I like to call it one minute mindfulness. Um, so I'd like to invite everybody just to sit comfortably um, with your back straight, but not rigid. Not rigid, nothing rigid here. Relax. Close your eyes. Feet on the ground, just um, comfortably, solidly on the ground. Your hands in your lap or on your knees. And just very easily scan your body from the top of your head down to your toes for any tension that you feel anywhere in the body. And when you feel in your shoulders, perhaps, stomach, legs, just let the tension go, let it go very easily. And feel your feet on the ground and the sense of the earth beneath your feet supporting you and just breathe. And watch your breath in and out. And especially the out breath. It's wonderful, the out breath, how it allows us to release any tension, any worries, any things that are on our mind, we can just let go. Even thoughts. We can't really stop thoughts, but we can just let them go. And the out breath is very helpful for that, just in and out. And off goes that thought, like drifting away like a cloud in the sky. And feel the spaciousness of just breathing in and out. And try to center your being in that spaciousness, knowing that the earth beneath us is holding us and that there's wide space all around us. There's nothing to do at the moment nothing we have to solve, there's nothing 
we need to control. We can just be. Just feel the spaciousness of just being. You center yourself in that. And now very gently open your eyes when you're ready. You can keep them closed if you like to. <laughs> and smile. Just smile. You can smile inwardly to our bodies, which are doing such a great job 24-7, <laughs> keeping us going. Smile to all those organs in our body. And if you feel like it, smile outwardly to all these lovely people who are gathered all around the world this morning or this evening or this afternoon to share our thoughts and, um, and share our goodwill. So hello. <laughs> Ni hao. Zhou San, um, Tashi Delay, I don't know if anybody is in Bhutan. And I looked up the word Cecilia for uh, hello in Tagalog. I think it's Kam, Kamusta, is that right? Kamusta, hello. Kamusta. Kamusta, <laughs> Kamusta, monsieur. Good day. <laughs> it's the Aussie way of saying it. So following on from our very lively recent discussions about the dire strait of the world <laughs> and Katja's wonderful reflection on acceptance and possibility, thank you so much for that, Katja, last week, I thought we could investigate radical hope and what it means as a Buddhist practitioner. What does radical hope mean? So we do indeed live in very interesting times. Interesting in Chinese means difficult. <laughs> we live in interesting and difficult times indeed. And next slide. Thank you, Joyce. As um, the author Rebecca Solnit wrote in, in a lovely book, Hope in the Dark, this is an extraordinary time full of vital, transformative, and often unforeseen movements. All sorts of things are bubbling away. But it is also a nightmarish time. And full engagement requires the ability to perceive both. So to be fully engaged in the midst of this paradox takes hope. And that's what radical hope is really about. Next slide. The philosopher Jonathan Lear um, wrote a book, um, I think about 10 years ago, on radical hope. He coined that phrase, ethics in the face of cultural devastation, was the title of the book. And he called radical hope the anticipation of a good for which those who have the hope as yet lack the appropriate concepts with which to understand it. It's a bit of a convoluted definition, I think. So you've got the hope, but you don't really understand why you've got the hope. And he went on in his book to ask the question, how should we face the possibility of our, that our whole culture might collapse? Now, that was Jonathan's question. But I think a better question might be, how do we find the courage to live with paradox and uncertainty? And I think Buddhism has some useful practices for this. These are practices for everyday courage. So next slide. The, the lovely Irish poet David White called courage, he said courage is what love looks like when tested by simple by the simple everyday necessities of being alive. You know, just being human, being alive in a paradoxical world takes a lot of courage, doesn't it? And we all know that. We all exercise that all day, every day. Next slide. And I think it's good to remind ourselves that courage is as contagious as fear. 
we have to be very careful with fear because it, it is very contagious. But equally, courage has that quality. And there are a lot, courage takes so many forms. You know, there's the courage to accept impermanence and death. There's the courage to resist cynicism and hopelessness. There's the courage to hold the tension of wanting to know and control things, yet having very little outward control. And there's the courage to simply be vulnerable in the face of our lack of control, of our uncertainty. And that sense of vulnerability, of not being in control when we'd like to, can lead to an uncomfortable tension, which is called cognitive dissonance. So next slide, please. And this was first, this idea of cognitive dissonance was coined by a psychologist back in the 1950s, uh, Leon Festinger, and he called it the state of tension we experience when we're holding two contradictory cognitions. They can be beliefs or aspirations or even thoughts that are inconsistent with our self-image. So let's say when I get upset with someone, you know, I've, they've said something that's you know, made me feel vulnerable or upset, but then I think, oh, my goodness, I shouldn't be getting upset because I'm a Buddhist, you know. That's cognitive dissonance, the contradictions that we feel in ourselves. And because consonance or psychological coherence which is the opposite of dissonance. So we, we, consonance is really important to us human beings. We don't like dissonance. We don't like this uncomfortable feeling. We want to return to consonance, to psychological um, stability, to wholeness. And because of this, this strong urge to get rid of dissonance, it can tempt us to use very dodgy tactics to restore a feeling of comfort to ourselves. And these taxic, tactics include self-justification, denial, rationalisation, blaming other people, racism, passive aggression, confirmation bias, you know, all these strategies that we employ to restore a sense of, oh, I'm all right, you know, I'm, I'm a good person, actually. You only have to look at uh, our politics to see cognitive dissonance being constantly <laughs> um, employed, I would say, in a, in a negative way, in a really destructive way, you know, through blaming and, and not accepting ownership of, of situations. But in Buddhism, we can use cognitive dissonance in a constructive way. In fact, as a psychologist, I tend to think that's actually what the Buddha was on about, that to be human and feel uncomfortable or to feel uncomfortable is very human. That's dukkha, dissatis unsatisfactoriness. And yet we can employ dukkha as a practice, as a way of, signaling a need for more awareness, more consciousness. So our sense of dissonance, our cognitive dissonance can be a cause if we use it as a practice for hope. And this isn't blind hope. In the next slide, please, Joyce. This is hope that is grounded in truth, in, in other words, in appropriate concepts. I mean, Leah was saying, if you don't have the appropriate concepts, you, you, hope is radical. Well, I would say hope is radical because we do have the appropriate concepts. And these are the concepts of impermanence and change. We, we, I mean, we may not be able to fully accept impermanence. We may wish that things actually weren't so impermanent, but we actually grapple with this idea of constant change. We grapple with the idea of interdependency that there are causes, conditions, and consequences for all of our actions and for all events. But perhaps most importantly, 
we have that possibility always of awake consciousness, what, what I would call transformative imagination. As Buddhists, we can employ cognitive dissonance using transformative imagination, using our Buddha nature, using our potential to be awake. And so we, ha we have the potential always to have for courage to live with paradox and uncertainty. Um, the problem, I suppose, is how do we sustain that radical perspective on reality of impermanence and, and interdependency and turn dissonance into dharma? And so next slide, um, Joyce. That's, that's, I've just concocted this sort of formula here that by combining focused cognitive dissonance and transformative imagination, we actually can turn that dissonant feeling into a truth, into Dharma. Um, so let's say I'm, um, I'll, I'll give you an example. So I'm, I'm, I'm angry with somebody who's, you know, said something that I feel is betraying a true a confidence or is unkind to me. And it's, it's broken my trust in some way and I'm hurt and I'm angry and I want to tell them off. But telling them off doesn't really fit with my image as a calm person. And so I feel that dissonance in me. Yeah, that's really unfair what that person said. And yet I don't want to lose it with them. And I feel the dissonance and I stay with it. And I use it as a signal to find a better approach to the situation. And so by staying with the dissonance, by focusing, by seeing that, yeah, I, I feel the dissonance, I can then ask myself the question, what, what would a Buddha or a Bodhisattva do in this situation? So I'm focusing, I'm using transformative imagination. How would the Buddha handle this? How would a Bodhisattva handle this so that the situation is, uh, doesn't escalate, that it's more skillful and it might bring benefit to myself and the other person? So all these so-called negative emotions that we feel, anger, upset, etc., etc., can actually be applied to practice awareness um, more consciously and to any difficulty that arises. And so using the transformative imagination that I am a Buddha, but just not yet. I haven't quite made it yet. So next slide, please, Joyce. So this is the paradox of the path that, that in the Buddhist path, we are practicing in order to know what we already are. So we're already awake beings. We just haven't um, experienced it consistently yet. And um, by the way, the, some of the best performance indicators, if we're looking for key performance indicators, are the six parameters. So let's, you know, we want to be patient, we want to be generous, we want to be disciplined, we want to have those qualities of the parameters, and they can act like signals, you know, when we're off, off center, when I'm not being as patient as I'd like to be, when I'm not being as generous as I'd like to be, aha, time to practice um, mindfulness, time to practice kindness. So I'd like to, Joyce, next slide, I'd like to reframe Leah's definition of radical hope and, and, call, and call it that radical hope anticipates a good, which is awakening, awake consciousness, for which those who have the hope remain confident that even though they may sometimes falter, on the path, that waking up is always possible. And next slide. This is a quote from um, Yonga Mingyur Rinpoche's book, Love, uh, In Love with the World. I, I think it's, it's um, so inspiring. To make yourself a better person is to make the world a better place. And he says, Nothing is more essential for the 21st century and beyond than personal transformation. It is our only hope. Transforming ourselves is transforming the world. And 
I think Priscilla, you reminded me that that was actually COP's motto at the beginning. I don't know if we're still using that motto that changing the world by changing our inner world is really the best thing that we can do. Um, and so last slide, um, in our, I think I've taken up a lot of our chat time. Is that right? <laughs> I think going to signal. I was going to invite you in the chat this week to share an experience that you've had recently where you've held that inattention, dissonance, you've applied transformative imagination, and you've brought about mutual benefit. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mac. So our section, uh, we will be grouped, sorry, we will group into three to four members for sharing and discussion section. So in the discussion, we recommend you spending a little bit time to get to know each other and discuss our questions. So, and there will be a Zoom notifications to guide you through. And also feel free to let the flow of your discussions lead you through. So our session today are guided by Meta which is unconditional love and kindness for all sentient beings. So let's use these breakout sections to express and receive loving kindness to and from one another. Let us take time to pause, to share and to listen mindfully. We also ask you to share some of your findings with the larger group at the end of the breakout sections. So let's, our, let's go to our breakout rooms for a good discussion for the day. See you all back in 15 minutes' time. CRT, considerate, res respect and tolerance brings mutual benefit. Yeah, that's from Khan. Anyone else? Courage, accepting the changes and optimistic determination for the transformation. Yeah, the courage to accept change is a big one, isn't it? It's just to accept that things do change all the time courage and Joey says we transform within by sustaining the wholesome the wholesome and address the unwholesome sometimes it's the simple things that aren't simple at all yeah so um, Priscilla says we're often trying to meet a self-image and this causes our dissonance it's it's so true the 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 whole construct of the self is um is very problematic for us isn't it we need a healthy self-image we, we need to we need a healthy ego and yet that e that feeding that ego can become a source of our own dissonance um tom says and bringing to play other faculties faith determination humility gratitude aspiration bringing those into play yeah we've got we've got a lot of tools in our toolkit Thank you again, everybody, for your patience and <laughs> listening. So we really hope that the chat-in section was uh, helpful to you. And we hope you experience the unconditional love and compassion from this community. So but for anyone who might need greater help, you can actually uh, contact the list or the contact list here. So And you can also reach out to the professional organizations on the screen. So we're happy to announce an upcoming event, which is our COP meetup in physical way. So please come and meet our friends from all over the world in person if you can make it. So it's dated on 25th September at NTI itself. So we will be having our, we're reaching actually three digits of Sunday chat in sections on 2nd of October. So a good news to all, and we are delighted to have Dr. Jonathan Page to facilitate for coming to Sunday chat in sections with the topic of Samvigar and Pasada. So as we check out today, let's recite the dedication of marriage together to send love and compassion to whoever in need. Let us now dedicate the goodness of what you have done to all living beings. May kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity pervade all worlds. May we cherish 
and build affinities to benefit all beings. May Chan, Pure Land, and precepts inspire equality and patience. May our gratitude and humility give rise to great vows. A big thank you to Mac again for getting us for the great topic today. So reminding us to keep up our daily lives with radical hope and courage. And not to forget to turn this dissonance into Dharma. So thank you everyone for joining us. I wish you all well and happy always. So now we will have our usual post check in discussions. So please stay around if you have time. So otherwise, see you all again next week at 11 a.m. on Sunday. So have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you.